how cognitive remediation may help with um, depression, anxiety, and also the uh, confidence boost that people may experience? Yeah, you know, this is really the computerized part of this. Um, uh, well, that I shouldn't under, I shouldn't understate the the role of you know the the rehabilitation therapist, but um, the when a person is playing some of these exercises uh, and they're doing well on it, um, it, it's sometimes for many people, especially if they've um, had a lot of failures, it's the only thing they're doing well in that moment for them. Um, so they're seeing their scores improve. They're seeing um, uh, their their levels get bumped up. Um, they're seeing good job after each particular exercise they do. So um, even if it's unconscious, they're kind of um, recognizing that they're they're doing something well. Um, so that's a really I can't I can't state enough that that's like a really vital part of this whole process. Um, then when you have um, myself or someone else seeing them do that and acknowledging that they're doing it and affirming how well they're doing. Yeah. Um, they're kind of, again, thinking to themselves, oh, okay, I can do this. And um, so that's, you know, that's something basic, like processing speed or attention, you know, one of the core um, cognitive areas. But when you help them translate that into, you know, a functional part of life, and um, they, they begin saying, oh, wait, it's like, I can actually, you know, clean the dishes again, I can drive my car again, I can, you know, whatever the task is, um, they're realizing that they're, they're actually capable of doing that also. Yeah. Um, which is, which is really, really important um, yeah. because they have experienced, you know, maybe they flunked out of school or, you know, they got lots, were getting really poor grades because they just couldn't cognitively put it together. So, um, so with the people that you see when they come in to see you, do you do um, some talk therapy and some emotional support as well? I don't do any psychotherapy, um, but my presence and, and um, just kind of by nature of, of being with them um, and, and joining them in the process um, and talking through a lot of what they're going through, uh, I, I guess could be considered therapeutic, but no, I don't do any psychotherapy. Um, I, I, so when I'm doing it, it's part of the, the team, the treatment team in, in, in a broader sense. So mm -hmm. um, everyone who I work with already has a, a clinician or a therapist, already has a psychiatrist, and then um, I'm brought in also to, to address the cognitive self and the rehabilitative and functional aspect. So we're all kind of working collectively. Um, so cool. to that end, I do talk with their therapists or clinician um, and psychiatrists about the work that we're doing with them on a regular basis. Um, so how do people find you? How do clients get referred to you um, to come start this process? Yeah, um, so the, the most common way for, for clients uh, and people to find me is usually through, I mentioned earlier, the kind of the transition out of hospitals, out of the hospital stay. Um, so oftentimes they're um, kind of mixed into there with with a clinician will find me or or, or, or go through that process. Um, a number of people do end up kind of searching online and, and find uh, find me through uh, through my website, which is rchinstitute.com or restoringcognitivehealth.com, whichever one. Um, and uh, a therapist also, so psychiatrists and therapists. Um, will often kind of know about cognitive remediation, know that I'm really one of the few people that do it on an outpatient basis in, in this area in, in Southern Connecticut and uh, the New York City metro area. Very cool. All right. Well, Greg, thank you so much for your time. Greg Paletti of the RCHI Institute. And this has been a fantastic uh, Happy Norm Pro talk. Thanks, Dustin. Thank you.